This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. It's endurance time, finally. Time for the Grand Valley 300. Race through Grand Valley Speedway, a course with the best view in Gran Turismo racing. So essentially, it's the same as the Nations races. Sort of, kind of, a mix between the two where it's like... You, you basically have like the racing modified street cars, and then you have a mix of the special model stuff like this Castrol Supra, for instance. Or... We are not going to the car wash. I have... I'm not washing my Griffith that we used for the Nations race. Uh... Not... Yes and no. I mean, it doesn't really work well, but... I don't... GT1 isn't really wasn't meant for a wheel. Neither was GT2. So, like, I don't even bother. Anyways, essentially those kind of cars. When I was uploading... Not uploading. When I was starting my stream up on Twitch, I had four options for a poll. I had the... Chaser LM Edition. GT3, yes. GT3 I won't be using a wheel, though, because it doesn't work very well with a wheel, in my opinion, and I don't really like it with a wheel. Anyways, Chaser LM, Viper GTSR, CRX LM Edition, and the Mazda RX-7 A-Spec LM Edition. To my surprise, which, by the way, if you see the stutter, don't worry about it. There we go. This had the most votes. This won the poll. I had a 10-minute poll up while I got the stream started, and this was the winner. Which was interesting. So, yes. Um, I've actually never driven this car. For all the times that I've played this game, I've never driven the RX-7 A-Spec LM Edition. Which, this should be interesting. We'll see how this one goes. We will, we will see how this goes. So, I want her to be like a good even amount of like heavy hitters and maybe some slower cars. That's a... Okay, that's a good feel. Literally four special models, and then, um, like, one rally car. Gotcha, Slushy, no worries. And then we have a back marker, the Civic 93. Okay, that's perfect. So I had to refresh the field three times. So here we go. First endurance of the LP out of three. Now, for anyone watching on Twitch right now... No music. Why? I, I I can't stand listening to the same songs over and over again. Okay, first off... Holy shit, this car has good acceleration. Damn, we're already up to second in T1. It looks like refreshing the field didn't really do shit, but... We're already dominating. Not dominating, but like we're right behind the Impreza. The Impreza actually got a really good launch. It's that all-wheel drive, but then over time it's just gonna really start to show its weakness on the straightaways like here it's already hitting the rev limiter i think yep already hitting the rev limiter but yeah so anyways those of you watching on twitch right now music is disabled because the ps1's uh, cd drive i want to say it's a cd drive it does it didn't have the read speed required in order to play different tracks it was either something like that or some maybe like the ram or something i have no idea i think I think I saw it on like a Matt KC or a Retropolis Zone video. Something about the PS1's read speed. I think it was the PS1's read speed. I, I, I think it was Retropolis Zone now that I think about it because he did a review on Mega Man X4 and he was comparing the PS1 and the Saturn versions and essentially the PS1 version had to loop. It, it couldn't like do an actual loop of the music because of the read speed of of the disk drive and therefore it had to stop the song and start it over in this game that's the same case whenever one song gets loaded into the actual race jesus fucking christ dude it yeah okay rubber banding is disabled as i mentioned before this car is a behemoth dude holy fuck dude i didn't think this car was gonna be like all that good I'll get back to the car in a minute. Anyways, because I'm losing my train of thought. So, um, especially when a song gets loaded into the into the game's memory, that's the only song you can listen to. So imagine if you're playing this game and you, I mean, look, as much as I like Lose Control by Ash or or As Heaven Is Wide by Garbage or Freedom to Win by Masahiro Hondo, I'm not gonna listen to the song over and over and over and over and over again. Like, no thanks. That's just a pain in the ass, dude. Like, don't get me wrong, like, I, I think when you have someone to chat with, it doesn't really matter. Like, someone in the Discord call, but... 
since I don't have anyone to chat with in the Discord call today, at least not for now, unless someone wants to join in, then, um, like, I I'm not gonna want to hear the same song again and again, essentially. It's like, screw that, dude. So that's why, on the YouTube upload, we're just gonna go ahead and edit in the actual, like, like different songs, essentially. So that's the benefit of watching on Twitch, you get to watch live, you get to interact, real time etc etc but then watching on youtube you get to actually hear music god damn dude we we're literally already just destroying the whole field so first impressions this is a card that i've seen in the dealership in gt2 obviously as a kid and a okay that's weird six gear is like it's like an indie car six gear on an oval. Like, it's so close to fifth gear that it's basically just kind of like an overdrive or like an overtake gear, I suppose. Doesn't really serve a purpose. That's interesting. Like, I wasn't even paying attention to the six, to the transition between gears five and six. But anyways, if this was a car that I've always seen in the dealership in that game, or if I played GT1 as a kid, if I have ever won this car, I have never bothered using it. Because everyone always talked about the concept car, and my oldest brother played this game, and only this game, when he had a PS1, he was in high school in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then he basically told me, like, like the, the car that you have to use to beat the whole game is the Dodge that you get, the purple or the yellow one. So anytime I've won this car, I always wrote it off as like a piece of crap. That isn't really worth, you know, like, usage at all. But hell no, dude. This car is... Dude, this car is fast as fuck. And it handles very nicely, too. Although I do kind of wish I got it in purple. I think that's the alternate color for this car. At least from what I remember from GT2. Because it was this green and it was purple. And purple on this car looks sick as fuck. So yeah, I mean, actually refreshing the field really didn't do much, like, yeah, see that 6th gear, really, really short. Like, it, dude, you can literally be 5th gear the whole time, like, I'm curious. I kind of want to take this car to the test course, and then just proceed to, like, test out, and, and test to see, like, if the 6th if the gear actually gives us any more straight line speed. At least with the stock setup, because obviously we can tune the setup if we wanted to, but... Yeah, I don't really like tuning the cars too much, unless it's like a street car that we, you know, it's like a weird street car that we just modified that we have to tune in order to win, like the Camaro in the GT Cup, the National Series that we did earlier in the LP. Like that Camaro had a really bad transmission. The gears were way too long, and therefore it just it was god awful in acceleration. So I had to spend like an hour just figuring out a freaking tune to win with the Camaro Z28 because the Viper was a pain in the ass and so was the Super and the GTR. Can't really remember too much. It's been a while since I um, since I actually uh, did that championship. I want to say like sometime last year, December, January, or like December last year or January this year. All I know is that it's been a while. It's like my stream. It's been a while. I think the last stream I did was... Fuck me, dude. I think it was beginning of June or end of May. No, it was beginning of June. I think it was like GT Sport or something. Like, I was supposed to stream before I left the Guatemala because I really wanted to do Daily C, which was um, Group 1 at San Croix C, if I remember correctly, which was a really interesting combo. Like, I watched Cyrus do it for a bit, and like... Group 1 in GT Sport is like a category that's really terrible when it comes to BOP and just overall like, yeah, BOP and competition because unless you're driving a hybrid, like literally an LMP1 hybrid, there's no point in driving anything else. But that track actually kind of opened up the floodgates for the VGTs and I want to say, yeah, mainly the VGTs and like the older LMP1s to actually have a chance of winning, which is cool. Like, I, I remember, I'm gonna say it was the top 24 superstars from like 2018 when that category alla literally allowed like so many different cars to be competitive. I remember at some point the long boy was actually a viable option before whatever BOP happened now or 
whatever setup changes or physics changes happens to the game, pretty much prohibited the longboard from being an actual viable car. Like, that spot, I, no, it was St. Croix. It was also St. Croix Daily C uh, from a few weeks ago, from two weeks ago to be exact, where Mr. MCA used that car and literally didn't even have, um, didn't even have a chance to find anybody because the tire wear was so bad. But I seriously remember, the longboard was a viable option and like, one of those top 24 races, the longboard was on pole, I think, in the EMEA region. And so, whenever, um, whenever somebody used that car, they just straight up dominated the beginning, and then, obviously when the tire degradation kicked in, then the longboard was a sitting duck. But yes, that was literally, like, GT Sport of yesteryear. Not yesteryear, like, literally launch. Like, I would love to play, um, yo, what's up, Arthur? I would love to use more Group 1 cars in general if there was actually, like, a variety of shit to use. Like, I can imagine, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe with Hyper Car, like, no, I just think, no, that wouldn't make sense either. Just because, like, Group 1 will always be bad. Because it's, because it's a, it's basically just a... A gathering of every single type of prototype in existence, from Group C's to LMP1s to Fantasy Cards, aka GPT. So you're never ever going to have any kind of um, real balance. Like if Group 4 is imbalanced and Group 3 is relatively balanced okay, but can show its cracks from time to time, Group 1 will never ever ever be balanced. Like you said, too many different classes together, you're never ever going to have a balance and it sucks. It's a real shame because there's so many cool cars that I want to try. And I wish I could do that daily, dude, but literally, like, the night before I left to Guatemala, I um, didn't get any sleep, and I was supposed to stream that day, like, do a, a last-minute stream before going to the airport, because I went to the airport at night, which I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait for, like, a little bit before I recap the Guatemala story, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's quite a bit that I want to tell quite a bit of people but um essentially like i just didn't have time to like i, I needed to sleep dude because i was like you know what like i had to go pick up my uncle and yeah like yeah that'd be cool oh lmp 900 ah that'd be cool but like wouldn't wouldn't vgt's be thrown into group x though and just forgotten. Four classes into one. I wonder how that would work though, like trying to find the balance between all of them. Anyone who's just tuning in, by the way, music is off on purpose because uh, imagine listening to the same song on repeat for an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, it could be better. Anything would be better than what we have now because literally, unless you're at a track like St. Croix, uh, it's basically just a Toyota TSO 50 domination. Unless you're one of the, unless one of you're one of the what's it called? Um, one of the aliens. Yo, Max, what's up, dude? And tell us, what's up, man? How are you? It has been a bit, and thanks for the 14 months, my dude. I really appreciate it. So, anyways, um, yeah, they shouldn't be together. I'm just saying, like, like that'd be interesting, though. Just like how that would all work. Like, I know it makes things better for sure, but. I mean, GT7 is going to have um, Can-Am cars, so I wonder where the hell Can-Am cars are going to go. Yeah, which made things interesting, you know? That's what made things really interesting, because, like, it, it, it opened up the floodgates, like I said before you showed up to show, for different cars to actually be competitive and to have a chance to fight. Also, to show, I never driven this RX-7 before, and I was just saying before you showed up, uh, I always wrote this car off as a piece of crap because everybody talked about how the best prize car from the UK versus US was the Dodge Concept LM edition. And so when I saw this, it's like, oh, not the one I wanted. And oh, Jesus Christ, this car is amazing. This car won, won the votes, by the way. I did a, I did a poll for people who showed up to the beginning of the stream, and yeah, this car won by a landslide over the Viper GTSR, which was a big surprise, honestly. 
And then also just the fact that, like, I refreshed the field three times just to get three three LM editions, a rally car, and a JTCC car, I suppose. And, like, literally, even then, I'm still just destroying everybody. Hey, what's up, Paula? How are you? That would be nice. That would be nice. Speaking of esports, Motorsports Games announcing today that um, IndyCar is getting a game in 2023. If that is a paid esport, and because I have a huge love for IndyCar racing, that is a game that I will probably pour a fuck ton of time into. TBH, just because, like, like my homie Diego, for example, like, um, him playing NASCAR Heat, obviously being part of um, Petty Esports when I'm not sure if he's still doing that or not. I don't think he is, but regardless, like, being actually part of a NASCAR team, I want to be part of an IndyCar team, dude. Like, fuck, dude. Like, okay. Um, I kind of did a cheeky post on, or comment on Instagram on IndyCar and NBC Sports' uh, okay, IndyCar and NBC's um, Instagram page. And so they were like, if you could drive for an IndyCar team, who would you drive for? And I tagged Myra Shank Racing, and I was like, Myra Shank Racing? Who knows? Maybe I will when, when the IndyCar game comes out and they do esports with a little smiley face. But um, honestly, if I had to choose a team, it'd be Myra Shank. Why? Because Michael Shank is a freaking awesome dude. And come on, you win the Indy 500 with Castro Nevis, and you crack open freaking beers, dude, on, on the yard of bricks. Come on. Like, who wouldn't want to have that guy as, as a boss? Someone who's cool as fuck like that. And Jim Meyer, too, owning Sirius XM. That's a hell of a sponsor, dude. Like, I don't have a Sirius XM subscription. My friend LC Racing does. And literally, like, Sirius XM. Oh my god, AMSP, dude. Being, being uh, partnered up with. Um... Okay, look. If I had to choose two teams, it would definitely be AMSP or Meyer Shank. Also, AMSP because Zach Brown's the homie, too. Not literally. I wish. Maybe one day. Like,. Like, I, I saw Zach Brown at the Long Beach GP in 2019, and I didn't have a chance to say hi. But I wanted to say hi, and, like, li literally, like, if I meet team owners that I like, at least the plan is now just be like, hey, you know, I'm a communications major at so-and-so school, and, you know, I want to get into, you know, I, I want to like, get into the world of motorsports in terms of, like, marketing or PR or something. What can I do? Like, Zach Brown would be a cool as fuck dude to work with, because he just, he just gives off a good vibe, dude. And Pato, yeah, having uh, Pato as a air quotes teammate. Like, dude, when um, Diego was driving for um, Richard Petty Esports, having uh, Bubba Wallace as his teammate, and not like a teammate, but I guess as like, a, I guess, co-worker, air quotes, for lack of a better term. Like, that, the idea of that was fucking amazing. Like, for me, it, it would be like, okay, I guess I look at it as like, not only cool team, uh, team owners, but also cool drivers that you're paired up with. So, like, for me, like I said, Pato and whoever else drives from McLaren. And then for Meyer Shank, it's literally Castro Nevis and I want to say Harvey, because literally Harvey is like... I don't think Harvey would go anywhere, dude. He's kind of grandfathered into the team, really. That is if Felix resigns, though. Dude, show the problem is that, like, look, Felix is an amazing driver, dude. He's a driver that I hold to a high caliber. But he's just been having an abysmal season, dude. And it doesn't matter. Here's the, the shitty part about motorsports, dude, is that it doesn't matter if it's good luck or bad luck. If you're not putting in results and you're, like, 20th, dude, you'll get booted. Unless, like, the team owner is really nice and they're, you know, they're really understanding. Like, dude, Hinchcliffe is going to get booted from Andretti, which, like, that's what all the... I hope so, too. Yo, what's up, Rodrigo? We were just talking about how, um... The IndyCar game was announced today, and if if we did IndyCar esports, who do we want to drive for? I just said um, uh, McLaren or uh, Meyer Shank Racing. Like, okay, so I think it was Marshall Pruitt who did an article on Racer.com. He was pretty much saying something along the lines of like, Hin Hinch isn't saying anything public, but he believes that he has some sort of leg injury. I don't know how true that is. I have no idea how true it is, but like if he has a leg, like some sort of like leg injury that's not allowing him to drive at his full potential, then that is a problem. The thing is, right, is that like how do you go sequels for that crash? What crash? A 
Okay, yeah, this car doesn't go that fast. Like, like, straight line speed-wise, like, not fast, but acceleration, dude, this thing's a freaking funny. Um, I'm not talking about Felix Barrett, I'm talking about Hitchcock. Oh, 2015? Maybe? But wasn't it his, like, pelvis and not to be funny, his actual, like, buttocks area that actually got penetrated by the, um, by the suspension? I think that's what he said. I remember he said that in an interview that it was literally his... Yeah, it was literally his, his butt and, like, his pelvis that got literally, like, crushed by the freaking uh, by the suspension piece that went through him when he hit the wall in T3. Yeah, but, I mean, that's the thing, Paula. It's crazy because, like, he had, what, a single race at the GP of St. Petersburg last year for the finale? And, dude, if it wasn't for that mistake that he made for spinning out, dude, he was... Solid. He was really freaking fast. And my thing too is like, dude, I don't think Michael should get rid of any of his drivers. Why? Because let's be honest, Andretti Autosport are having a shit season this year, dude. Just like last year, they're having a shitty ass season this year, dude. And like, Colton, yeah, won, but like, Colton isn't really performing all too well. Whether it's mechanical gremlins, like, I watched the highlights from Mid Ohio, and he had some really bad really bad pit stop uh, gremlins but overall like dude Rossi isn't performing that well Hinch isn't performing that well neither is Hunter Ray neither is um, Colton and I mean obviously Colton is their you know Colton's the golden boy Rossi's the golden boy too but like I don't think they should get rid of RHR and Hinch but like RHR maybe if like maybe RHR because of his age perhaps but by the way, shout out to DHL and RHR. Not sponsored, obviously, but the fact that they ran the Pride car last month, fucking badass. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, may maybe not because of his age. I mean, look, he's 40, which isn't really old anymore because, look, Castro Nevis won the 500 and, like, Dixon is still extremely fast at the age of 40. But maybe he wants to, like, maybe he wants to step back a bit and maybe run part time with for the family because that's what I heard too. But Hinchcliffe should get another shot, dude. Bro, Elio literally, dude, 46 years old and, uh, like, it, it is. It really is, Paula. Like, dude, even, I mean, I know the oldies are the old days, but, like, some drivers retired when they were in their 50s. Like, Mario Andretti retired when he was, like, what, 54, I think? And he, he was still winning. I mean, he went, I think, the last couple of years in his cart endeavors he didn't win anything until like phoenix 93 if i remember correctly even then though dude he was still running relatively well for his age like elio was driving probably at the best of his career like dude i think that indy 500 was probably his best drive if you ask me because come on let's be real the drivers of today are like robots not robots that you know, maybe some are for personality wise, but indie car drivers, like, I say robotic in terms of like polo and award, like, dude, they're robotic in the terms of like their skill, but in terms of like their personality, they're freaking sweethearts or they're super badass and funny. But, anyways, like, dude, the drivers of today are literally crazy, and like, the fact that the old guys are still managing to keep up with them, and like, not only keep up with them, also like beat guys of their generation and continue to fight the new crowd stars like dude Dixon's gonna stay around for a couple more years Elio's gonna stay around until he's at least 50 I hope he gets a full-time job with MSR that would be amazing I was like yeah to show he I agree with you about Colson basically grabbing the car by its neck like dude he's he's driving the fucking wheels off whatever the hell's going on with Andretti dude for real like okay and it was the Detroit onboard where, um, on that restart where he won, where he passed everybody. Dude, that fucking restart reminded me of Montoya's pull lap at Detroit in 99. Where, like, you can see on the onboard, like, dude, just, like, literally fling the, fling the fucking car around. Just snapping the fucking car's neck, dude. Unreal stuff, man. Like, that's... Dude, that's the beautiful part about motorsports in general. It's just like, dude, that, like, people just, from the outside, think that it's just cars going in circles, which, I mean, I get it to a certain extent. Yeah, but when you see onboards, dude, when you have to see, like, how, 
how much people have to fight the car in order to not crash or worse circumstances die it's it's fucking crazy yo and you're with the 16th month subscription thanks so much dude love you brother hope you're safe man i know those floods in germany are crazy right now but yeah i know you told me you're safe but just saying just in general hope you're safe i am not immune to propaganda I mean, the only, uh, the only propaganda, oh, it's not really propaganda, the only government talk I'm going to talk is going to be about my Guatemala trip, because something happened where, if you guys saw the, if you guys saw the, um, whatchamacallit, the ping for the stream itself, yeah, uh, there's a story with the protesters, <laughs> and I almost died. No fucking joke. Not literally, like, I had a gun to my head or anything, but, like, the, uh, the, the opportunity to die was there. Which I'm gonna tell that I'm gonna tell my trip. I'm gonna talk about my trip in a bit. But anyways, like okay, because I want to wrap up the indie car conversation essentially. So like, pretty much, Ed Jones, dude. Ed Jones is another driver who like, I don't know, man. Like deserves a sh another shot maybe because like, dude, he, he had so much fucking bad luck. Like, dude, Dale, Dale Coyne is no longer the shitty team that everybody makes a meme out of. Yeah, Ed Jones wanted to kill me in Guatemala. Yep. A driver from Dubai found me in Guatemala and wanted to kill me. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, so, like, literally, um... Like, Ed Jones deserves to... I think he deserves another shot. I don't, I don't know. Mark, who knows? Like... Okay, what? He raced, like... Coin Ganassi ECR, then no 2020, and then back to Coin this year. Grosjean's been doing incredible, bro. Like, yeah, some misfortune, but, like, dude, that Indy Grand Prix performance, kudos to Roman, dude, because holy fuck, man. Like, yeah, VK and ECR big brain them in, in the strategy, but, dude, I feel like a super aggressive car is what Grosjean, is what Grosjean needed, dude. Like, Formula One cars are, like, very precise, and you have to drive them, like, you have to be, like, really smooth and precise to drive them, and, like, Grosjean, I feel like, is the type of driver who likes to ring the neck of cars. Like, GP2 cars, are, at least back then, were a little more aggressive, weren't they? Because I remember Pato, at least this this is Formula 2, obviously, like, modern day, modern day GP2, essentially. Like, Pato, when he was on the Marshall Career podcast in 2019, I remember he said that the GP2 or F2 car, the Pirelli tires were garbage, and he had to literally, like, drive the wheels off the thing. Ooh, yes, dude. K-Mag in, in the third AMSP car would be incredible. That would be, that'd be amazing. That would be awesome. Like, I, um, I think K-Mag could do it, dude. I mean, albeit, I did watch the race highlights because I had to work that day. But, albeit, I, um, he did lead the race. Like, yeah, he went off track because, dude, at Royal America, you can't expect him to do grand things literally going into like a limited practice qualifying in a race dude so him making a mistake like in, in race conditions fully expected but for him to lead off sequence and to keep the lead for a bit dude not bad at all man especially he'd never driven an indie car never driven at Royal america yeah bro exactly like all the respect in the world to k mag for that bro because like that's not easy that, that shit ain't easy at all, man. Like, trying your best to... to I mean, dude, you, you literally... I mean, every driver wants to win a race, man. Doesn't matter if it's esports or regular or, like, IRL shit. It doesn't matter. Everybody wants to win, so you're gonna do whatever you can to win. Like, literally, the fact that he even gambled, like, like that, without even um, having any experience in IndyCar or at Road America, fucking awesome and speaking of which some of you might laugh but cody Ware, he did awesome at road america dude like he stayed in the lead lap and he finished like what 19th he didn't like i mean look i know jimmy johnson is someone who has all the cup experience and stuff but like if jimmy johnson is a guy who has 20 years of cup experience and no indycar experience cody Ware is a guy who has experience in the cup series and not so good equipment and he gets he drives like so many different cars, so he can't really craft himself in one specific style of racing. And he's a very late starter. 
the fact that he didn't spin once and he was running relatively decent times and he was like at worst two seconds off the pace at road america that's pretty goddamn good dude given the fact that he's never driven an open wheel car before where like jimmy johnson had the opportunity to drive like an f4 car at a, at a school and an f3 car and i think he drove a lights car like he prepared he prepared himself driving different open wheelers whereas cody where had never driven an open wheel car and no i don't really think an lmp2 car in the asian le mans series or imsa really counts because asian le mans series like he ran like what, four races and then imsa he only ran daytona but dude i i just hope like I know Cody likes Cup, and that's where his dad's team is and stuff, but I really hope he gets out of Cup, dude, because, like, dude, Cody, where he follows me on, his, on Instagram, he follows me on Twitter, he's awesome, and I love him as a driver, he's someone I'd have a beer with if I ever met him, but, but, dude, his dad's team is not the best, and, like, honestly, like, it, it's just the thing, Cup, in the Cup series, you, you literally, it's like Formula One, you have to be in, like, a good equipment, otherwise, like, you can't be a smaller team, and you can't, really succeed unless you run super speedway races but dude in running the dale coin with rick ware racing car like it didn't do a bad job at all man like i think if he gets more seat time in in an indy car dude i reckon he could probably maybe nab a top 10 maybe nab a top 5 in some cases dude and like yeah two seconds is quite a lot for road america but no, it, it, I mean, it's reasonable. I guess, like, some other drivers have been, like, a second off. I guess, like, Robert Wickens was a second off when he hopped into an Indy car out of nowhere in 2017 to replace Mikhail Oloshin when when Oloshin was having problems getting into the U.S. But, like, even then, dude, Robert Wickens is someone who had a shit ton of experience driving ETM and F, you know, what is it, Formula Renault 3.5 and GP2 and all this other stuff, where Cody Ware had never driven an open wheeler at all. And on top of that, like, if anyone's new to the channel, I'm someone who has, I don't really consider myself like a historian, but I'm a big IndyCar fan, and so I try to keep up with the history as much as possible. Obviously, during the, the Indy Racing League days, you had a shit ton of crappy drivers who just were field, or field fillers, and even during unification, you had people who shouldn't have been in an IndyCar at all. And like, dude, Cody Ware was much better than a lot of those field fillers. And he arguably had less experience than some of those field fillers. Like Milka Dino or Francesco Giacconi. So I hope he does more IndyCar races in the future. Or hell, even runs full time. Like, even if he's the back marker of the series, like, dude. For, for me, like, he's someone who literally would, would um, who, who would definitely get a lot better, dude, if he's able to craft himself in, in the competitive equipment in one series. But good to him for trying out different shit, dude. Because it's not easy to drive a cup car, then an experience car, then an LMP2, then an LMP3, then an Indy car, then whatever the fuck. But yeah, anyways, K Mag. I hope he gets to see. I'm I'm happy that uh, Casper Evans will be back for Nashville. I think Nashville, the Indy GP, Portland, Mazda, or Weather Tech Race with Laguna Seca and Long Beach. Which um, I'm doing the whole West Coast swing. For those who don't know, I'm going to Portland, Laguna Seca, and Long Beach. That's gonna be. I'm gonna try to do it on a shoestring budget as best as I can. Nashville, I'm excited for it too, dude. Like, that's gonna be such a weird street race, like going over the bridge, and like the, the track reminds me of Formula E Sanya, uh, Sanya track, which is the one in China that they went to before COVID. Except the bridge is actually pretty goddamn huge, so it's like a, it's literally a four lane. You know, obviously forwards and reverse highway. No, or bridge. The gooseneck track. <laughs> yeah, literally. Nashville's gonna be cool, dude. I'm excited to see that one. And, like, I just hope I don't have to work that day. Actually, I have to submit my work schedule. So after the stream, I'm going to. Like, after this stream, I have to submit my work schedule for August. Because I got a new job. I'm, I'm back to being an ambassador. Yay. So more promo shit. Hooray. But obviously, I don't... Just close where I work. Just I just do promotions and stuff. But anyways, um, so like yeah, um, I haven't been able to stream more, even though I haven't been going to school because of work and other shit. Yeah, I will under. I think for work that day, I'm gonna set my schedule so that way I can work either before or after the race, depending on when the race is held.
which should be exciting. That's one I'm so looking forward to as well, man. Like, that's gonna be exciting. Um, Portland's gonna be cool to go to in person because I've never been to Oregon. Laguna Seca is going to be a dream come true because it's like I've always wanted to see an open wheel race at my second favorite track of all time and my favorite track in the U.S. And then Long Beach is Long Beach. It's my hometown because I'm from L.A. And yeah, it would be my um, 99, 19, 19th uh, appearance at that, at that race. which will be really cool. And obviously, first appearance in September. Like, some people are complaining, they're like, oh, the race is held in September, and they should have just made it for April 22. It's like, because the tradition is like, bro, the, the first ever race was in, on September 25th, 1975. I think it's, it's the 25th. Or the 15th, I can't remember. The first race was held in September of 75, so it's like going back to the roots. The course is above the sign? Yeah! Nice, Jag. That, that, that's awesome. Were you just visiting, or what were you doing out there? So yeah, Indies, Indy, uh, the Indy car game. Overall, like honestly, I drive for any team, but MSR or AMSP would be the dream team for me. It'd be cool being a Penske employee. It'd be cool being a Ganassi employee or an Andretti employee, regardless of which, whichever team. Except for any team that Santino Ferrucci would be on. But imagine I say that now and then like and then uh, <laughs> I get and then I get put on a team where he's on if I ever make Indy Party Sports awkward. But <laughs> let's just hope that doesn't happen. Um Yeah, like that's gonna be exciting. Also the F1 car was unveiled today. Some people were saying it's ugly, but let's be real. Okay, first off iRacing elitists are the worst people in the sim racing community, let's be real, like, because, like, I love iRacing, iRacing is, iRacing is definitely, like, one of the more hardcore sims, and it's fantastic for endurances and all that, but the elitism with iRacing is horrendous, dude. Hey, everybody always complains about, why isn't iRacing doing this, why isn't iRacing giving the treatment, like, okay, first off, with the Olympics, literally, literally, bro, Gran Turismo was chosen because not only is it like one of the most popular na names in the sim racing community or gaming in general in terms of car culture stuff, but it's easily accessible, dude. The Olympics should be easily accessible. And yeah, PC players would have to spend some money on a on a console, but bro, literally, like, let's it's apples and oranges. Let's compare. PS4 Slims are what two hundred dollars right now, I think. I think that was my price for Black Friday. But regardless, PS4s are like 200 bucks, whereas PCs can be over a thousand. And you want to have the Olymp the Virtual Olympics be open to as many people as possible? Like, of course, which option are you gonna go with? You're gonna go with the, the more recognizable name, of course. Like, dude, iRacing, look, iRacing has one of the most one of the most prestigious sim racing championships on the globe. Yeah, or 2K. That's why I say over a thousand. Really, Alvaro? Which one? Was it Jose? Was it Josete? Was it was it Manny? Who? He got insulted for not playing i racing, but like the people who play i racing, let's be real, can't fucking drive in real life. Or if you put them, if you pair any of Josete, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Jose Oh, yeah, it was Fantastic, yep, because he was the one representing Team Espana. Um, dude, like, look, you put any, you put any chump who complains about iRacing not giving preferential treatment, these, oh, was it Fantastic? Who's Brea? That's not, man, that's not TRL, man, that's not, I don't know who Brea is. The only three Spanish, um, GT Sport players I know are Fantastic, Manny, and, um, Jim Brea? I think it's Jim Brea. Yeah, okay, I remember now. That name now rings a bell. Thank you, Alvaro. Yeah, because I only know Koke, I only know, um... Uh, Josete, and I only know Manny. Monaco Finals. Ah! Got it. Okay. 
Well, thanks for the refresher, because I literally forgot about it. Sorry. But anyways, dude, everyone who complains about iRacing not, you know, not being used or complain or says that iRacing is better, literally have like 500 IR. Put them up against anyone like Lamb or Rodrigo or Death Sun or or Lightning or B Racer. Put them in iRacing, bro, and without any iRacing experience, like here's two tables. Whoop the fuck out of anyone who's done like over a thousand races in iRacing with like 500 IR, bro. That's the fucking truth, dude. Most of the people who complain about iRacing not being used are ones who can't even fucking drive the game to begin with. They're the ones who bring out cautions in NASCAR races in turn one, or who go four wide at Indy. Hey, what's up, Rain Man? They're literally, yeah. Dude, exactly, Max! Look at that! Rubelar's playing fucking iRacing right now! Because I saw him playing iRacing, dude, and he literally, he's a 7k driver. And you know what, dude, it's, or 8k, but regardless, like, dude, he's someone who doesn't play the, who hasn't played the sim as long as many people, and he literally is driving just as fast. Yo, what's up, 9,000? So, bro, uh, Mick is all. I, I saw that he joined iRacing, like, sometime last year, I want to say, and, dude, I went to his iRacing page just out of, yeah, yeah, to show Google art. Um, out of curiosity, I went to his page just to look at his stats. Dude, he was only like four races in, and he was already doing like Class D Ferrari Challenge, and he won on his second attempt, bro. <laughs> Dude, like, like, that's, that's the thing, man. Or like, like, look at Emery. I'm at pit soon. It doesn't really matter, because, yeah, we'll make this a two-stop, I suppose. Hey, Jimmy T, what's up, dude? Dude, they're literally built different. Like, Emery, too, she's fucking built different, too, bro, because, like, she can just hop on from GTS one day and I race into another day seamlessly. Like, like in, like, a flick of a switch, bro, like, she doesn't have to think about it. I'm no Emery. I'm no Hazal. I'm no Google I can do the same, because, like, so, uh, like... If you compare me and, and Daddy Cyrus, like, like, okay, I can transition back into iRacing without thinking about it, but obviously I'm not super quick. Cyrus, on the other hand, he tells me, like, he, he tells me, like, in DM, like, I have to think about it whenever I play iRacing, because, like, I'm so used to playing GT Sport and I'm so used to being competitive in GT Sport that, like, I have to think twice before I actually go and play, um, what's it called? Before I play iRacing. Yeah, him too, Igor as well, dude. Quick pit stop, as these usually are. Huh, so if you're in the box ahead, you're literally gonna have a massive advantage. Because we literally entered at the, well, not at the same time, but like, the Lancer and I, I, I entered right behind him and um, yeah, I, um, I had a significantly slower stop, I suppose. Anywho, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, that, that's, that's pretty much just it, like, 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 dude, they, people who can do that, like, dude, it's, it's just, they're just, it is natural talent for sure, but for sure it's, like, just being smart, too, dude, like, they're just smart people, bro. Like, I know Lamb was joking before on Cyrus's Nerver 24 stream saying that, like, if I ever did this with you guys, I would be scared shitless. But, dude, I want to see him do iRacing one day and, jo and uh, join SV as, like, a as a guest driver. Just like Ethan and everybody else, bro. Like, literally, like, dude, I, I think he would do amazing, if you ask me. <laughs> God damn it, Alvaro. Please don't mention them by name. That name is cursed, my dude. Cursed. Cursed, I tell you. Yeah, dude, Tanner Dibble. I still gotta, dude, I still gotta, I still gotta meet up with Dibbler, man. Like, well, it's gonna happen one day. It's, dude, Dibbler and I have been trying to meet, meet Erky as well! Yes, dude, Erky's, dude, Erky's like, Erky's not eSport level on iRacing, but he's hella competitive there, dude. And he's eSport level on GT Sport, which is the amazing one. But like, 
for me, like, the only game that, I guess it's because I haven't really played it much, a set of courses is the only one that I really can't, like, um, it's not that I can't wrap my head around, but that one I have to think about a little bit. I was playing with my teammate Gears, and, like, we were just fucking around just doing some, like, BMW GT3s at, at Laguna Seca, and, like, even then, I, I had to really think about, like, how to drive the car. Yeah, Rayman, dude, Erky's an amazing freaking driver. <laughs> Mustang Group 3 at Spa? Dude, it's GT Sport. It, it, that's the sad part, man, because, like, so many people are hopping ship over to iRacing or ACC because they're tired of, of how crap GT Sport is becoming. They want to wait for 7. But literally, if, if they just had ironed out, you know, some of the some of the bugs in the game, or they actually showed more care for nations and manufacturers, bro, we, we would still have the plethora of awesome people in the community, dude. And they're still in the community, of course, but just, they, they just don't have a big presence anymore. Yeah, because of the floods. My friend LC sent me a picture through text of the floods, dude, and man. Like, they just look so bad. I feel bad for anybody who's over there, man. It's, it's terrible, bro. Like, that's why I said Ender, like, luckily you're not, luckily the nearest, okay, so, he said that the nearest body of water near him is not really one that's too, you know, it's not really too big of a body, which is good, but still, concern for all my German homies and anyone in Belgium and anyone else affected it anywhere else. Yeah, the toxicity on NA is a problem, bro. And it's a shame, dude. But literally, like, you can't do anything about it, man. Valerian, what's up, dude? Hope your stream went well, man. What were you playing? Some PD Sport? <laughs> I love you too, bitch. Um, I guess you're just in time, because I'm going to go ahead and segue, once we're done with this conversation, to my Guatemala trip, because I also just talked about that. Because we got some people in here. I know, I know several of you were asking about it, so... I have it on my notepad. I don't have, like, a script or anything, but what I do have is, like... I have, like, a... Like, I, I basically just wrote down notes of, um... That scared the hell out of you. You know what the problem is, Alvaro, is that I don't have the music on in the game, and so the game sounds a little more quieter than usual. Just a tiny bit, at least to me. The music pretty much, um... Oh, we got another raid! It's Marvin! What's up, dude? Marvin the Gamer 27! Yo, two raids in one! How's it going, dude? How was your stream, dude? Hope it, was, hope it went well. It's raining raids. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, I'm doing good, Marvin. How are you? You're just in time for my, um, for the Guatemala story, because I'm about to t tell about my trip. Anyway, so, it's not like I wrote down, like, a script of what I was going to say on stream. I, ooh, nice. Wait, fun races? What? But you're on the Marvin the Gamer 27 account. Wouldn't you be on the MCG 27 racing one for racing stuff? But, yeah, literally what I did was I just wrote down, like, bullet points on what exactly I did. Mad Max! What's up, man? It's been a while since I've seen you. How are you, brother? Oh, you missed one challenge? Dude, that's how long I've been out of this freaking, um, out of the streaming stuff, man. Like, whenever Marvin streamed, I kind of gave him a mention. I think it's kind of for the better, in all honesty, because, like, for me... Like, I think having two separate YouTube channels would be better. Like, one for racing, one for regular games. Unless you're like Rhino, you just don't care. Or me, where I just don't care. Or, you know, but like, I think for, for Twitch streaming, it should just be like one house. Because there, you you easily just label, you, you label yourself as a variety streamer. Yeah, YouTube makes sense. For Twitch, I think it's best to have it under one house. Unless you're making a living off Twitch. Like... Like, Arrow? Like, Mr. Arrow HD literally makes a living off Twitch, and therefore, like, he can't have his numbers affected too much, and so he needs to, um, have the Aerotech channel in order to do, like, the Emo Night streams or, or play random games that he doesn't want to have sync, have his numbers sync, because obviously he's a racing game channel. So, why have I been gone for some time? Not only because of work, but also, uh, I went to Guatemala. That was a lot of fun. And quite a fucking journey. So essentially, for those who don't know, um, 
Back in 1994, my parents, um, my parents were together, and they didn't wear protection. One thing led to another, and uh, I was born a, a nine months later. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, but seriously, um, for those who don't know, in all seriousness, um, I was born in the states, but my full, but full-blooded, I am Guatemalan. Yo soy 100% chapi. And so, my blood is Guatemalan, roots are Mayan, however, uh, I, I'm nas nationality-wise, I'm an American, because I was born in the United States, and this is where I lived my whole life. And so, the thing is that, I, I can say this now, obviously, because it's not like we we'll get in trouble or anything, but, you know, parents to illegal immigrants, and, and therefore, like, you know, they never had the chance to go to Guatemala at all, until my mom got her, um, my, you know, my mom got her residency in 2012 or 2011 or so, and she got her citizenship uh, in 2018. 2018? I'll check right now. I can literally check right now. I can go to my sister's IG and just check because I know she posted about it. And I went to the wall, looking at my phone. Don't text and drive, kids. There's a picture she has of my mom outside, like the outside the place where she got her citizenship. Oh, she, she took it down. Oh well, that's fine. I'm pretty sure it's because like she had her page public for a bit because like she's a big like football fan and her and like her her name kind of has like her her favorite football team in it. And so yeah, now it's private again for good reason because uh, thirsty dudes on Instagram are not fun to deal with. Anyways, so like, um, essentially, my mom went back to Guatemala in 2019 for the first time since she was a kid. Was it 19 or 18? Somewhere around there. I know she got her citizenship in 18. But she went, but sometime around there she went back. And so she was just like, you know, I, you know, I want my kids to experience this. So she went, oh yeah, she went by herself. Then in 2019 she took my sister. And she went back to her, her, not even a hometown, dude, her home village. Yeah, home village. And so, pretty much, like, my grandpa came over for Christmas, I want to say, in 2019. And my grandpa was in pretty, he's in pretty fucking bad health, dude. Like, I'm not close at all to my grandpa. Even after this trip, I still don't feel super close to him. So when the time comes for him to die, I'm not gonna be like distraught. I'm gonna be sad, you know. But at the same time, he lived, he's lived a long time. He's freaking 89 years old, and he's seen a lot of the world change and stuff. And he went from having nothing to something. So like, hey, you know what? He lived a pretty damn good life. He didn't work hard you know, for the things that he has. So anyway, so like, pretty much, I remember what he told me in 2019 was like, hey, you know what? He's like, I'm not coming back to the U.S. and I'm dying. My wish before before I go is for every single one of my last grandchildren who haven't visited my house to come to my house. And I tell them, like, I promise you, dude, I'll go. COVID comes around and I couldn't go, so that fucking sucks. So when I got vaccinated, Rain Man, I'm in the same boat as you, dude. I, I can tell you about it in the end. So anyway, so like, um, so literally like, um, when, when, when I got my vaccine, Mom was like, all right, we're going to Guatemala. I was like, oh shit. Um, okay. It sucks because I had to cancel my summer courses, so I had to finish school next year, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, had I not canceled school, I wouldn't have gone on this trip, and then also I would have not have gotten my current job. My current job actually was a blessing, because let's say, hypothetically speaking, I only worked there for, for, that, for June alone, which obviously I'm still employed. I was part of a team, dude, that literally my bosses, like, with, without going to specific numbers, obviously, because I don't give anybody my, only my coworkers know my Twitch channel, and I only, I told them, do not talk about work stuff or any, um, yo, let's go to show, fuck yes, dude, and, and that sucks, Alvaro, you'll get yours soon, though, dude, you'll get yours soon, my dude, so, yeah, when, um, when, um, when I had my work meeting yesterday, they um, they were like, "You can put this on your resume. You're you were part of a uh, you were part of a team that raked in o over a hundred thousand dollars in return on investment in one month." I was like, "Holy shit! Okay, we're fucking talking now." Whenever I go to apply any other job, I can I can pull that you know I can pull that 
card out of my, you know, bag of, you know, my bag of tricks, and like literally, dude, use that to just flex on employers, bro, and get almost any job that I want now. So, anyways, literally, so that's why I'm like, you know what? The fact that I had to cancel my summer courses, and it was kind of a, I was super stressed out during school too, so it was a nice break. So, anywho, um, essentially, after I got my vaccine, we get we get our tickets, and um, yeah, man, like. 10 days, dude. I spent a total of 10 days in Guatemala. It was something, man. Like, okay. Obviously, like, I've always wanted to go, and I've always wanted to, you know, I've always wanted to learn about the country that, the, the blood that I come from. And I I got to do it, man. Like, there was one thing that I sadly didn't get to do, and I'll get into that, but for the trip, for more than anything, was more of, like, as much as it was learning about where I came from, it, I would say it's more of like a, I mean, here for grandpa to be at his house. And I, um, and it was more for, it was, it was more of a mom trip too, because, because my grandpa is going to die soon. And I got to fulfill my promise to him. Like I, I got to be at the place that he built and grew and uh, not grew up because he, he bought the prop, he bought that plot of land in 1964. And he's built so much on it since then, which I'll get into in a minute. But anyway, so like, dude, th that night, the night before, for reasons I won't get into, Tushio already knows, I couldn't sleep for shit, dude. And so like, like I, I couldn't sleep for shit, and also because, um, kind of overwhelmed with excitement too. Excitement and a bit of, not nervousness of like being scared of going there, but it was more just like a... I don't have any expectations for this, but what the fuck is this going to be like? And so, pretty much, like, I flew out of LAX midnight. So I got to sleep on the plane for a couple hours. Yo, what's up, Ender? How's it going, my dude? You're just in time. Um, so I literally, you know, I literally land in Guatemala City at 7 a.m. And so that was what I considered day one, the arrival. And so, the first person I see is my aunt, Alba. And, um, she's not really my aunt. She was somebody that, like, my dad took, you know, she, she took care of my dad at some point. She's, like, in her 60s or 70s or so. But I consider her an aunt, and she absolutely loves us. So, like, and also, she's badass because she's a big motorsports fan, and she's a big Formula One fan. Her and her husband. I'll talk more about her husband in a bit because there's a lot I have to say about him. So, she's not really my aunt, but I, I call her Thea. I just call her aunt. So, anyways, um, so yeah, it was funny because, like, obviously she hasn't seen me since, like, 2018. So she sees me and she just gives me a big-ass hug and she's like, oh my god, she's always crying. She's like, you look so good. She's like, you're going to leave here with a wife. And I just start cracking up, dude. I'm like, okay. Hi, Thea, and I just give her a hug and kiss and shit. And so, we just walk over, and I go and say hi to one cousin from my dad's side that I've always heard about, and I finally got to meet him. His name is Uber. Like, H-U-B-E-R, Uber. And here's the cool thing about him. He's a massive metalhead and gamer, just like me. So that's a fucking poggers, dude. I always knew that. I always knew he was a massive metalhead, but... Bro, literally like a, a massive gamer too. And his favorite game is Destiny on PS. Uh, on Destiny 2 is his favorite game right now, and his favorite game of all time is like Tekken and Metal Slug, which is fucking cool. Um, when I saw him at the airport, and he was, and I, I shook his hand, and um, I was like, I was like, Elmer, I was like, Elmer, nice to meet you. I have to remember to speak in English because most of you don't speak Spanish. Alvaro was the only person. I was like, I was like, Elmer, mucho gusto. He was like, he was like, Uber Galvez. I'm like. Oh shit! It's him! I'm like, yo! I'm like, dude, this is a trip of us going to my mom's place of growing up. What's a member of my dad's side of the family doing with us? And then I met another one of my aunts who my mom would always send her toys and clothes and stuff because they were extremely poor. So it was like, this is the aunt that she got all the stuff that we we would either grow out of or whatever because uh, she was extremely poor and stuff that we would send them to sell to make a living because yeah she was very poor now she's just poor which is good but anyways um we literally at the airport and dude i got to meet the rest of my family like some other like it's mainly 
okay, it was mainly just those two family members and like one of my cousins too. So it was Uber, his wife, who is a complete sweetheart, and my niece. My niece Angie is fucking cool, guys, because, dude, she's like 13 years old, bro. Like, yeah, I'm saying bro, like it's one person. Guys, she's 13 years old, and she's also, dude, she is also into the same music as, as her parents. So she's a massive metalhead. Her parents met at like a metal show, I think. There's a, bro, there's literally, all right, Tisho, hope you like the story while you're lurking, while you're listening in the background. Um, literally, bro, like, there's a picture of them when they were younger, where they met, where, where my cousin's wearing a freaking Iron Maiden, um, uh, number of the Beast shirt, and she's wearing a fucking Stone Temple Pilot shirt, I'm like, that's so fucking cool. And so, literally, my niece, dude, she's into, like, this, dude, she's hella into music, she's also into gaming, retro gaming as well, dude, she's only 13, bro. Like, if a game like Star Fox is past my time, because this was out in 93, then that's way past her time, dude, and, and even then she likes all that kind of shit. And she's also into anime, which um, on, on our last date we were just talking about nothing but anime, so like, I was telling her how my favorite anime is Death Note, and then hers is, um, uh, no, it's uh, Demon Slayer. So, yeah, we literally are packing, like, sardines in a freaking Hyundai Grace. Here's the thing. Unlike a lot of, uh, of South American and Central American um, countries, Guatemala has a really shitty trade, trade agreement with a lot of countries, except South Korea. So we have a huge influx of South Korean cars. So the Hyundai Grace that um, my uncle Nelson had, which he was the driver, or he owned that, that bus, uh, I suspect it was a school bus. Because in Korean lettering, there's a freaking stop sign on the door that comes out like that. Which is crazy. I'm like, what the fuck? And that freaking bus, if it seats like 12 people, we smush like 15 people in there. And we have to throw our luggage on top of the bus because there's like a little like basket or whatever that, that was up there, like a little area for luggage. And we literally fucking tied it down with, with, with rope. <laughs> <laughs> Our luggage was tied down with fucking rope, dude, that had to literally be tied in a knot inside the bus on a freaking door handle, uh, not door handle, a ceiling handle, bro. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, we're literally like in the 1980s, dude. This is insane. Like, the first place we go eat is, um, I have fried chicken for breakfast because Guatemala has this uh, fried chicken place called Pollo Campero. And that is like our McDonald's, that's like our franchise, and I've had it before in the US, and I always thought it was good, because it's pretty good, but I always knew, I was like, you know what, this is probably isn't as good as it is in Guatemala. Yeah, dude, in Guatemala, Pollo Campero, oh my god, bro, it's fucking god, like, yo, what's up, Rush, how are you, brother? Um, Pollo Campero in Guatemala is fucking godlike, dude. Literally, I had a breakfast plate where it was literally for like seven US, dude. I literally got a, a two pieces of fried chicken, um, fried plantains, beans with like tortilla chips to like, you know, to just dip in, sour cream, and a stack of fucking pancakes. <laughs> and orange juice, dude. Orange juice was like 10 quetzales. I mean, it wasn't real orange juice, it was this like shitty brand called. Esqueeze? I'm doing great, Rush. Thanks for asking, dude. It was this really shitty brand called Esqueeze, which pretty much consider it like Sunny D. It's basically Sunny D, but even cheaper. <laughs> and it, it, it's it's not very good, but you know, I drank my fucking cup of fake orange juice because literally I was like, you know what? I'm on vacation mode and this is Guatemala. Like, you know what? This is our Sunny D. I hate Sunny D, but I might as well just fucking drink this. Why not? So yeah, dude, like literally, like, dude, the capital, it's like any other capital, but the thing is, it's like, dude, I'll get more into, I'll get more into it on, on, um, day eight, which is the return to the capital, which is what I categorize day number eight of my trip as, but the, the, the capital's fucking hood, dude. If LA's hood, mm -mm. I feel safer in my hood than I do in fucking Guatemala City, dude. Because that's a, you know, it's a third world country, dude, and there's a lot of poverty, so dude, it is ruthless there. So anyways, we eat breakfast and we're on the road. Dude, the countryside of Guatemala, there's, it's literally like the highway, the highway that we're on is literally one way in, one way out. Their highway system is so bare bones. It's literally just like, it's not like the United States or like Canada where you have multiple freeways and shit. It's literally just like, 
have like maybe a total of like 15 highways at the most, and that's being generous. And I'll get into that in a bit as well, explaining that, how, how that fucked us over on day five. So literally like, my mom grew up in a really small village in the state of Sepali. And so literally like, dude, the drive there non-stop was about five and a half hours, but with all the stops we made, it was about eight hours. So we stopped several times, dude. It's amazing to see a country just so tropical, like so green, and it's not tropical like Caribbean tropical, it's like different, it's like jungle-like, dude. It's tropical jungle, and we're relatively close to the equator, so that kind of explains it too, like the vegetation there is really weird. Like Guatemala is a hot country, but Isabel in general, that state is hot humid. It's fucking nuts, man. And so like, you're literally sweating in the morning, sweating at night. You're sticky the whole time. It's weird. But like, dude, we're driving through the countryside and like, we're, we're driving through small towns and it's crazy because like, all these towns are run down, dude. They're like, they're kind of run down and they look old and shady and shit. Like something out of a Wild West movie. Not trying to be funny or anything, but dude, literally like, imagine like a Wild West movie, but with like third world infrastructure. Not like things made out of wood. Things made out of like, like I guess, I don't know what building material, you know, like, not Oh, but like everything just looks rough around the edges dude it's crazy dude it's just crazy because like you know we stop at a gas station and literally i buy a fucking ice cream that's like three or four bucks in the states for like 75 cents us like eight quetzales seven quetzales six quetzales last time i checked when i converted 100 us dollars i got 775 quetzales yeah it's not like it's not like the states where everything is like Let's say a plate's like 10 quetzales or so, it'd be like 20 or 30 quetzales, but even then the conversion from 775 meant that like um, a plate with a drink would still be like 5 $6, which is fucking cheap. That's really goddamn cheap. So, like, we, we just stopped by several places, we're just buying food, like, I kind of have, I'm getting like, kind of emotional at one point because we stopped by this bread place, which I couldn't bring back any bread because I didn't have a chance to go back there. It was literally like this... It was called Torta Milas, and literally, like, they served, like, they, they sold, like, big loaves of bread for, like, a dollar, two dollars US, dude. And literally, they had, like, I'm gonna park the car real quick, because I don't feel like editing. Oh! Oh! That's what that means? Oh! Okay. Cajetas Caramel? Okay. Uh, so today I learned. Okay, so they literally had caramel bread. They had like, okay, so they're called quesadillas. They're not like the Mexican quesadillas where it's like a tortilla with like cheese and then you like put it on the stove and let it melt. It's just the type of bread. It's, it doesn't have cheese. It's just called that. It's just a loaf of bread that's sweet. But not super sweet. It's kind of like bitter. But it has a kick of sweetness. But then they have flavored ones like banana flavor, pecan flavor and like dude we bought literally one of everything and took it to the house like i wish i was able to go back there because it sucks because there's only one torta mila location and it was literally in some random town on the main highway that takes you from the capital to isabal which also takes you to honduras but we didn't go to honduras cause... yeah so yeah we're just stopping by all these different places dude it was only day one alvaro um we just stopped by all these different places you know we're um, we just buy chips um on my next pit stop, I think I might show off the chips. So, yeah, I want to finish this whole. I want to finish the whole trip recap before the race is over, obviously, because recording. Um, so literally, like, um, we're we're just buying different chips and ice creams and shit, and like, like, okay, why I had an emotional moment was because I got I had like a freaking like Twilight Zone moment, like a flashback, like not Twilight Zone, like flashback to childhood. When I was in elementary school, my mom would always make these peanut ice creams, dude, from scratch. And that bread place sold that same style of ice cream. And that was the first time I've ever had peanut ice cream like that since I was a little kid. And I was like, dude, I started to get water out. I was like, dude, my mom used to make these when we were little. We would come home from school from like, and we would like go, like we would literally, road beef, I'm talking about that right now, dude. I'm talking about that right now, man, so you're just in time. Like, dude, literally, like, like, dude, I'm literally, like, almost crying because I'm like, fuck, man, this is the same kind of ice cream that, like, my mom would make when I was little. Like, 
I'd come home from the playground or from school or whatever, and I would just like, she would have this ice cream in the freezer. She would be like, you know, there's ice cream in the freezer, like on a Friday, and dude, I was like, fuck, man, I, I feel like I'm seven years old again. But obviously hers is way better because she made it. <laughs> but anyway, so like, yeah. After driving eight hours, being in a freaking small 12 passenger with 15 people Hyundai Grace school bus, we get we turn off the highway onto this like windy road, and mom was like, "We're home," and I'm like, "Holy shit, this is where you grew up!" And like, dude, if the capital looked run down. The village she grew up in was really, really, really third world, really poor looking, dude. Really old fucking school, man. And I just start getting watery eyed, dude. I'm like, not because like, oh my god, this is my, like, it's more like a, I can't believe I'm at the place where my mom grew up. It wasn't an attachment thing, it was like, I'm gonna learn these next seven days. I say seven because we go to the capital, obviously. but. I'm like, I'm gonna learn these next couple days, dude, what, not fully what life was like for her, but what it kind of was like for her, because obviously it's changed since the 70s, but anyways, it's crazy because there was this old run-down looking building, she's like, that's where I used to go to school, that's where I used to go to church, and literally, like, her village was just like, a school, a church, a couple of stores, houses, um, like, alleyway and shit, and we get to her house, dude, and that's where I'm just like, that's where like the, that's where like all the emotions come in, dude. I'm like Jesus Christ, man. This is where this is where she grew up, man. This is where mom grew up. I was like, wow, dude. Their house is fucking old school. Like the, the front of their house is what they originally had. Their kitchen is a separate building, and it's an outdoor kitchen with like literally a freaking lock. And it looks like barbed, not barbed wire, but it looks like a, like the gates, like like a, like fencing as win, as window, dude. And it's like, dude, they're they're um. Even just talking about it is making me feel like something bad. Their stove is literally like like it looks like a big ass piece of stone, dude. Their sink looks like a big ass piece of stone, and I'm pretty sure that's brand new for them. Just see how old everything. That was the school. Wow, Elvaro, that's. It sucks that it's collapsed, but like hearing that, that's beautiful, dude. Even that, that's freaking beautiful to hear. And so, like, it was crazy because, like, dude, I was standing outside her house after I take in my luggage, and we sleep in a tent because the room, because the house had 30 people. I'm not shitting you, dude. So many of my mom's family traveled to the house because. The kids from the, from, the, from, the, from the United States are here. Delmi's kids are here. Her name is Delmi, by the way. Delmi's kids are here. We're finally going to meet Delmi's uh, actual sons. I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, we're the center of attention. This is crazy. So, my, uh, I meet some of my cousins. My cousin Omar is fucking awesome. He's, dude, he is super country boy. Like, he's adopted. Because, like, my, my, my aunt Rosita... She was adopted by my grandma because I think she was like homeless on the street when she was a teenager and my grandma found her and like pretty much took her in, which my grandma's, my grandma's a sweet lady, dude. I know I'm not close to my grandparents, but this she's a sweetheart, bro. So anyway, so like, uh, so Omar isn't my blood cousin, but he's my cousin, dude. He's my, he's my fucking family, bro. He, he's, he's a freaking down to earth guy too. And he's a son of a bitch as well. <laughs> he's a jugster, man. Um, so literally like, dude, Omar, like, dude, like, like, he's a super country boy. My cousin Jared. Hotted. Um, he's 14. He's pretty mischievous, and he likes to joke around. He likes to make he likes to make me like make fun of me because he's like, cousin, why are you bald? I'm like blame my dad, so he'll call me Peloncito as a nickname, like Baldy. <laughs> but like when he wasn't joking around, he was he was really fucking smart. He's really smart too, dude. He's a really smart kid. What's up, Ethan? He's a really smart kid too, bro. Like like I had we had like a. A conversation about the history of the country and dude what he was talking to us about which i won't get into too much detail about was it blew my fucking mind i'm like dude i'm like kid you're fucking smart his sister madeline she's so cute guys guys she's 12 years old she's a little girl and like 
dude, she's the nicest little girl I've ever met. Like, Angie is a sweetheart too, my my niece. But dude, she's like an ultra fucking sweetheart. Like, like, dude, like it's funny because she had like a like a tiny like one of those tiny little like 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 childish crushes on people. She's like, you're so cute and adorable. I'm like cracking up at her. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and she's like, she's like always, she's always around me because that and like. She was always hugging us and kissing us cousins from the States, like, always, like, Sergio, Elmer, Haiti. Like, I'm like, dude, what the hell? Not, not freaked out, but I'm like, you're so sweet. Like, you're a sweet little girl. Like, holy crap. She liked me the most out of all, all of them because I was, like, quiet like her dad, which is funny because her dad's name is Elmer and he's just like me, too. We're both extremely quiet when it comes to big groups. We like to eat food. And, um, yeah, we like, we sort of like, well, he likes motorcycles. He has a motorcycle, which I was about to learn how to ride, but we didn't have enough time to learn. I didn't have time to learn how to ride a bike over there, sadly. But anyway, so, like, I have some other cousins, too, like my cousin Cindy. She's, like, very, mis she's, like, she's cool, but she's, like, she's one of those, she's, like, a jokester. But if you joke back with her, she doesn't take it very easily. I'm, like, okay, whatever. But she's cool. And many other cousins too. So pretty much, like on the first day, we um, we go for a little hike on this. Like we just go hiking, not really hiking, but we go walking in like the dirt. And what cracks me up is that there's like this like metal log in between like the river and like the other part of the land. And I almost slip and eat shit until my cousin, until Uber is the one who holds my hand. And I'm like, holy shit, I almost ate crap. And then there was like too, there was way too much like vegetation and stuff on the trail. So we we're just like, nah, let's go back. So that was that. So that was that was the arrival. Let me tell you guys, as as much as I love eating eggs and beans and plantains and cheese and sour cream, having it every single day, I got so tired of it. And tamales, I got so tired of it. And that's all they eat over there, bro. None of my family eat vegetables, which probably explains why <laughs> their health isn't the best. <laughs> they're like, I can't give that. Like, they're, my doctor said to eat vegetables. We have some, but tamales are our culture. I'm like. In my head, I'm like, sure, but when grandma and grandpa were poor and they didn't have anything else to eat, sure, but you guys have money now. You guys can grow vegetables now. You guys can eat this shit now. Like, let's eat those. We only had vegetables one day. Anyway, so the second day, we go to this beach. It's called the Hidden Beach. It was more called, like, like in Spanish, Playa Escondida. Here's the crazy thing about Guatemala. There are two prices for everything. There's the local price, and the tourist price. If someone knows that you're a tourist, they will fuck you in the ass when it comes to charging you for shit. So the beach was to access the beach because it was actually a lake, and that little part of the beach was private property. It cost 20 quetzales, or about two dollars and sixty something cents, somewhere on that ballpark. But if they found that you were a tourist, it cost 80 quetzales, which is about like ten dollars. Which isn't a lot for us, but for them, that's like a, a full, according to one of my relatives, that's like a full day's worth of work. So, literally, like, my aunt Alba, the one who I mentioned earlier in the capital that likes Formula One, she's like, okay, look, Elmer, I love you, and you're, you're freaking cute, and you're a sweetheart, and you're, you're, one, you know, you're my, you're my uh, nephew and everything. But because you're from the States, because you're relatively light-skinned, because you're taller than most people here, and because you have a beard, and because, you know, you're clearly, your, your clothes make you stand out as a tourist, shut the fuck up. Do not say a single word when it comes to going to touristy places, because you're gonna, you're gonna reveal yourself. And because your Spanish is terrible, too. I'm like... <laughs> or I only said, like, the typical, like, buenos dias, gracias. I didn't try speaking any words, dude. Like, I tried speaking no sentences, which I'll get into another story on that when I'm in the capital. So, the beach was pretty cool. Literally, like, at the beach, um, there was a snack bar, which is pretty badass. Oh, I should mention, too, in, in the village, my cousins and I, on, on the first day, we went to go get beers. The rule in Grandpa's house, because he's pretty religious, like, no drinking. No one gets drunk at the house. No one drinks alcohol, which is fine. So we went to the corner store and we drank in the front. Mom sees us drinking and she's like, okay, whatever. She's like, good. She's like, drink here, don't say anything to Grandpa. Do not get drunk. Okay, fine. I kind of broke that rule, but on the third day, but we'll tell you about it. So it's crazy because, like, at the corner store, everybody's honking at us. And I'm like, what the fuck? At least here in, in, in Cal at least in the States, 
you know if someone honks at you, they want to fight. Or they're road raging at you. But in the village, in Guatemala, if someone honks at you, beep, beep, beep. They go beep, 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 beep. That's to say hi. So every car that passed by us, people would stare at us to say hi. People would honk at us to say hi. So literally everyone in, in that village, beep, beep, beep. It's like, wow. For a country that has people that will die for nothing, people are pretty nice at the same time. It's fucking nuts. So literally like, anyway, so we're, it's crazy because we're drinking. And dude, that, the corner store we were at was owned by like one of my mom's, like one of my mom's friends in the village. Like, their parents owned it, and then their, their parents owned it, and so now her friend owns it. So, like, we buy some beers and just some chips, and we're drinking, the friend just chatting and chilling. And my mom goes to the store, and literally the store owner is like, Oh, hi, Delmi. It's been a while. I'm like, what the fuck? You know my mom? And my mom explained it to her, and she's like, Oh, these are your kids? She's like, Oh, hi. I'm so-and-so. I forgot his name. I think it was, like, Roberto or something. I forgot. Anyway, so when we're at the beach... Dude, literally, this picture screams vacation because um, I posted on my Inst I, I, I want to post it on my Instagram because I'm gonna do on my on both my TMC one and my personal one because I'm gonna do like a photo drop of my vacation of like the best moments. I know I'm going slow. I know I'm in fourth gear. Uh, go down to second at least. Um, this picture here screams vacation. Come on. That's me eating our national chips, which is for drinks, and drinking Gallo on the beach, which is our national beer. Yo, Salika, what's up, dude? That is literally, that was literally like, dude, that was vacation, bro. Like that picture just screams vacation. Cause like I was eating our national chips and our national beer at the biggest lake in our country, which is cool. The water there was super fresh, and yeah, that's pretty much all we did. We just went to the beach, and then we went to this, uh, afterwards, we went to this town down the street from, and we're, we hopefully we're going to get it back, Road Beef. I hope we will, man. I really hope we will. I had to pull up my, um, my notepad here so I can remember exactly what I did. We went to this uh, town called Mariscos, which is uh, oh, next to the beach, and the boardwalk was pretty badass, dude, because like we went at night. And Mariscos is like, dude, it look, it looks like a fucking, it, it looks like a, it's a really small town. Not a village, but a really small town. And so a bunch of stores. And dude, we buy tacos. We buy like a three, three taco combo with a drink for 10 quetzales. Hold on. A dollar twenty nine for three tacos the size of my hand, bro. Tacos were, were each were the size of my fucking hand, like not counting the fingers, of course. They were pretty decent sized tacos with a lot of meat and cabbage because they weren't Mexican style, so they were Guatemalan style, I guess. So they had like cabbage and stuff, like the cabbage you eat on like um, on pupusas from El Salvador. And so literally, like, dude, drinking nice. So literally, dude, a dollar twenty-nine, three tacos, and I had a soda called Kiki, which is like our—it's like a much sweeter, less carbonated version of um, of any pineapple soda here, like pineapple crush. So yeah, dude. Yeah, Tusha, if I ever go to Rio, I'm—you're coming. With, I, I'm going with you, bro. And I'm doing the same thing I did in Watte. And so, dude, I shit you not, in Mariscos, dude, we were just chilling on the boardwalk and we were stargazing. We stargazed because literally, guys. You could see every fucking star. Like, we saw the Big Dipper, we saw Orion. It was amazing. The sky was so beautiful and clear. It was awesome. The third day, we went to a river with all the family. Like, my cousins and my Uncle Elmer led the way. We went hiking in the same direction we went on the first day, except we went on a different route. We went, like, more in, like, the jungle area. Elmer was carrying a fucking machete, uh, machete around, dude, and he was just hacking and slashing all of, like, the, the branches and shit. He's like, all right, the route's this way. That hike was so treacherous, but so fucking worth it, guys, because we went to a waterfall, and I went swimming in a freaking, in a waterfall, guys. It was beautiful. This is a picture I took of, my, of myself at the waterfall, right here. Look at that waterfall, guys. And my shirt's super loose, because that hike was super treacherous, and remember, Guatemala is very, um, it's very humid, so I'm drenched in sweat the whole fucking time. I'm sweating buckets the whole fucking time there. It's nuts. Like, 
it, it's crazy how much I'm sweating going to this hike, because it's hot too. And because you have to hike uphill, downhill, not slide on clay, watch out for rocks and shit. And guys, I shit you not, I jumped straight into the water, and, um, and uh, yeah, dude, like, I did the most Central American thing. I ate a freaking tamale. See ya, Celica. Have a good one, dude. Thanks for stopping by. I love you, brother. Stay safe. Drink responsibly. So, um, literally, under a waterfall, I ate a freaking tamale. What cracked me up was, like, we brought tamales in a bag, and they're like, hey, you guys, you guys want lunch? Literally, like, my, one of my, my cousin Uber was throwing fucking tamales across the freaking river at, at, at us. They're obviously wrapped, of course. And then one of my other cousins is literally just, like, with a three liter of fucking Pepsi. Yes, three liters. And, like, cups inside a freaking, like, bag. Yo, Rain TV, thanks for the follow, man. Literally with, like, um, cups inside a bag, throwing them across the fucking river, across the water, and the, the freaking soda bottle is just, like, floating and then going to the next person and someone serves themselves. It was pretty badass. My, my brother Edgar and Skeletor. Skeletor, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it too, man. Um, so when we're going back... Oh, so we go back to the house. My brother Edgar comes with his girlfriend. And literally when um, we go back to Mariscos, because um, finally caught one of these. Dude, welcome you're here. And Mad Max, thanks for following as well here on Twitch, man, because you're one of my OGs on YouTube. I remember, yeah, of course, I remember, yeah. So anyway, so like, literally, um, we go back to Mariscos because my brother Edgar wants to go drinking. He, he brings in a bottle from the States of um, Johnny Walker Black Label. So I got buzzed. I, I had like, whiskey and, and pepsi and then i got a second shot of just straight whiskey and i was like and i drank one gallo and i was like yo edgar how much abv does this thing have he's like 40 percent i'm like no fucking wonder bro <laughs> and so literally like you guys remember how i was on the drunk stream when i was literally just like i love every single one of you i was just like that as well and so i actually made my cousin uber cry because I literally went and I gave him a hug. I was like, in Spanish, I was like, cousin, I'm so glad I met you. I fucking love you with all my heart. And I, dude, he started to cry, guys. I was like, I, I thought about it when I got back. I was like, oh, I made him freaking cry, man. That was crazy. And yeah, we just chilled on the beach and just drank. And I had more tacos than Maddie's schools. So on the fourth day, the family cows, that's what I called it. I got to see cows get branded for the first time, which was sad, because, like, it's necessary, I get it, but at the same time, I'm like, poor cows, you can hear them screaming in agony, I'm like, I don't want them to scream, dude, I just feel so bad for them. Poor little cowies. I'm gonna pay every lap so that way the story can go on, because I have a lot to say, and I'm, I'm only on day four. So literally, like, it's crazy because, like, like I said, Omar is the one who's the, who's, like, the country boy. We all suspect that my grandpa is not letting himself die from starvation or anything because Omar is keeping him alive. Like, Omar is pretty much, like, he's pretty much his son, dude. Like, Omar is literally, like, dude, he he does all the shit in the house. He does all the stuff on the farm. Literally, I think, like, two laps, Jack. I want to say, like, two laps or so. So, anyways, literally, dude, like, it's t you know, Omar brands like two new cows, and Omar's like, hey cousin, do you want to come with me to take the cows to another plot of land? I'm like, okay. Literally, we go, we go to almost to that waterfall river, except we go to a different direction. And so literally, like we're hiking there, dude, with with um, Jared, and it's crazy because Ender, have fun, dude. You catch the vod on YouTube when it gets uploaded, and you'll you'll hear the rest of the story. So, anyways, um. It, it, two show exactly bro and it's like why can't you guys eat vegetables please for the love of god so literally i'm just like dude this hike is tre it's just as treacherous because it's a lot of downhill uphill slope and it rained the night before by the way rainfall there is crazy because it rains hard it's still hot and lightning strikes are like dude they're like something out of a freaking action movie it's fucking crazy how lightning strikes there dude Remember, I slept in a tent, guys, so literally, all you see is like, choo, 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 choo. I'm like, fuck, dude. I stayed up one night just looking at the lightning strikes. It was beautiful. I'm gonna pay every lap until at least I can tell the whole story. So, like, anyways, um, pretty much, like, 
it, it's crazy because the cows know where to go for the most part. Jared is the one who's behind the cows, making sure they're going the right direction. And Omar is the one who's like, Bacas! Vamos! Vamos! He's like whipping the freaking rope on the floor just to make sure they know where they're going. And they're all going, no. And they're just walking, dude. They're walking in a, in a coordinated route that they know where to go to. Like three, four miles away from the house to a plot of land. And so when we come back, guys, you wanna know how my mom is the greatest person on this planet? No offense to anyone else's mothers, but how my mom is the greatest mom to have ever lived. So I told my mom that I went with Omar to take the cows and Omar does it every 10 days. And that's where, you know, because they have you know, a refrigerator now, they, you know, obviously they milk the cows and I didn't have any milk, uh, Japanese version max. Um, when music's off because I don't want to listen to the same song over, over and over again and people who watch the VOD on YouTube will have every single song from the Americas and Japanese version mixed together. So anyways, um, literally like, you know, they have a fridge now obviously because it's 2021 and they can afford it. And so they store the, the, the fresh milk from the cows there. But guys, I told my mom that I did that and she was, she said this, at 4.30 every morning, me and my sister, your Aunt Lily, will literally get up at 4.30 in the morning, go hiking to that plot of land that you took the cows to, which is four miles away, milk the cows every single morning. Got it, Rain Man. Enjoy the lurk. Um, we will milk the cows every single morning, then go back home and... Oh, I didn't pay for tires? Okay. That's fine. I can, we can make it a drive through Fuck it. Um, milk the cows every single morning, take the milk back home so that way we can have breakfast and then ga gather our books to go to school. Guys, my mom's a fucking G. Every single morning doing something as backbreaking as that? Holy fuck, man. What else did I do on the fourth day? Oh yes, I went to a Mayan museum. I went to an outdoor Mayan art museum in Kiriwa, which had a bunch of like Mayan um, like statues that were made like in the 800s, 700s and shit, and there was an old stadium there. I asked Uber, hey, was this like, not to be, not to be funny, but was this a soccer or football stadium at any point? He's like, good question. No, this was a ceremonial stadium for the Mayans. I'm like, really? Like, yeah, for sacrifices to the gods. I'm like, okay. That was pretty badass though, to see all like the old art. And so, on the fifth day, this is the story that everybody is, that I've told has been wanting to hear about. I was supposed to go see the pyramids, but we got lost on the way to Tikal, which is where the pyramids were. So, story time. My cousin Ke Kenya is with us, along with my brother Sergio, myself, my brother Edgar, and his girlfriend. We are on the way to Tikal, and we see, a, we, we see traffic. There's only one highway to Tikal. And literally, we're just like, it was at the time where we went to this one, um, we went to this one gas station so that way um, Kenya can use her laptop and use the Wi-Fi at the gas station to do an exam for school because she was doing summer courses for her university. And so literally like, we're like, okay, something's not right. The traffic's not moving since we stopped here for the exam. Why is that truck still there? Why is that truck still there? Why is that, why is that weird uh, Toyota Oris still there? Why is that Kia Bongo still there? So we asked the gas station employee, like, hey, is there an accident? He's like, no. One village contaminated the water of a bunch of other villages, and therefore, all of those villages that had their water contaminated blocked the, the main roads of all of their respective villages. And they're refusing to let people through unless the government comes to fix the problem. I'm like, okay, that's not good. And so, my brother Edgar's like, what the fuck, man? I spent good money on these hotels. Like, bitch, you spent 60 US on these hotels. That's not worth what, that's not worth much. Like, that's $60 is a lot, sure. But like, dude, that's not worth anything stupid. And so, all of us were pretty much like, let's go home. But he's the only one who's like, no, let's, let's go to the, let's go to Tikal still. So Kenya's like, if you insist, let's go this other direction. Let's go to this place called El, El Estor. So we go through other stores. So we have to go literally an hour and a half around to go to a to store. Because remember, the, the highway system is going. So guess what? There's another roadblock there. And of course, the protesters have machetes and some of them have guns, like pistols on their hips and shit. And I'm like, oh boy, guys, 
This isn't some like clickbait shit. This isn't some exaggeration. I've stared death in the face before because of like one because of you know not the first time wasn't really like I got robbed at gunpoint when I was a teenager in high school from my iPod Nano, which that wasn't really like. That wasn't really like, um, you know, I could have died. It was more just, it, it could have, but it was mainly just like, uh, give the dude your fucking iPod, dude, just go away. Second time, I was racially profiled with ambush team by the police in, in LA, and the cops pulled guns out on us, and they were threatening us. I'm not getting into that story, because that's a story for another day, and I don't feel like talking about it, because I don't want to relive that shit. And so the third time was this. It didn't hit me until after I got home from from our little adventure to Pital, attempted adventure, when everybody was hugging us saying, glad you're okay, that we probably could have died. So, essentially, we pull up to the fucking roadblock, and my brother Edgar's like, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna talk to them. I'm like, dude, no. Well, on my head, I'm like, no, dude. And we're just like, Kenya's like, I'm gonna go with you. And so she's like, I have an idea. And so Edgar's like, no, I can handle this myself. And I told Edgar, I'm like, hell no. Kenya, you go with Edgar because we need two people for this. The reality is that we need a girl and a dude to be there because my brother has the interpersonal communication skills of one of those genies from the arcade that tells your fortune and speaks like this only for a quarter. So literally like Edgar grabs his cigarettes and Kenya grabs bottles of water from the trunk that we had because Pical is a massive hype to go to the pyramids. And so what cracks me up is like, in hindsight it cracks me up, but at the time I was like, do not fuck this up, do not fuck this up. Kenya was like, good afternoon guys, I'm a university student, I'm trying to get to my, I'm trying to get back home and I was re I'd really appreciate it if I can get her. My cousin Kenya is really pretty and she's very soft spoken and literally three of the protesters were like, they were checking her out, they were just eyeing her, they all was like, this is like a fucking cartoon dude. What the actual fuck? And then my brother Edgar was like, yeah, you know, she's... And he let, he took the lead. He's like, yeah, you know, she's trying to get home and stuff. And, you know, we're all trying to go home because she has... I have to work and she has school. And he's like, you know what? For your troubles, I can give you these Marlboros. Because he like... I don't know how the fuck he brought Marlboros. And I think he just bought them because they were imported or something. No, no. There were some other brand. There were some knockoff brand. But they were expensive in Guatemala. They weren't expensive for U.S. currency, obviously. But literally, dude, he gives them cigarettes. And he gives all... She gives all of them water. And they're like... All right, clear the road, let them through. And I was just like, what the fuck? Here's what I didn't know. And remember, these guys, some of them have pistols on their hips, some of them have machetes in their hands, and the machetes are like this fucking big, dude. And I kid you not, this is the part I did not pick up on. My, my brother Sergio was sitting in the back. He was like, you didn't notice the kids on the side of the road? I'm like, no, what about them? He's like, those kids were gathering stones. They were ready to pelt us with rocks. And don't forget, obviously rocks are huge. They're gonna break through the fucking window if they throw rocks at us, and they're gonna hit us in the head, and we're gonna end up, you know, with something bad. At any moment, those kids could have said fuck it, and they could have pelted us with rocks, or they could have said fuck it, and they could have tried to give my brother a, mach a machete to the face, or pull their guns out on us, dude. Guys, that was the closest I've ever been to death since I got racially profiled by the cops. Holy shit. And so, that was that. <laughs> Yeah, we bribed protesters with water and cigarettes, and they let us through. We get lost because um, we um, we literally like we get wrong directions from Kenya, and then also we um, we uh, what's it called? Um, we get wrong directions from locals there too. And so we were driving around for 13 hours, and we end up in this town called Koban. This Koban was fucking cool. That town is like a metropolitan like city in the, like like okay like east los angeles pretty much is what it reminds me of like a more third world east la that town is fucking cool and the vegetation there is pretty cool too because it's more foresty so it's not super hot there's like a breeze there and it's warm so it's like the perfect weather it's like southern california weather almost it was amazing dude and so literally like um for for Koban, we're on the way back and like on the highway to get to the capital and from to the capital or no to a, to a middle point of that road to the capital and then back to Sabal. That route was beautiful. Lots of trees. It reminded me of like Pacific Coast Highway kind of, but more foresty and more jungle-like. Or like Topanga Canyon in LA meets Angeles Crest Highway, which is the the the, high, the LA Canyon mod in the set of course of those who don't know. So really nothing else happened on like the sixth and seventh day. Like, oh actually yeah, that was 
day number, that was day number six, I could go way back to Koban. Like, lightning strikes on the road too, that was pretty sick. So literally on the seventh and eighth days, nothing really happened. That was mainly like the goodbyes and stuff. It was hard to say, not goodbye, it was like a see you later. It's like, it was hard to say see you later to my mom's family, a lot of them, because some of my aunts didn't really like. My cousins, I liked a lot, and we all cried and stuff, we hugged and said. Those days were chill, and they were mainly just me talking to my grandpa and talking to my aunts and shit and getting to know them better and stuff. And, you know, grandpa, getting to know grandpa better as an adult. Um, we have to go back to the capital, so early in the morning we go back to the capital. We get a negative COVID test. That was the first time I ever had the COVID test to the nose and to the mouth. And then I did the mouth one. We, I did the mouth and the nose test. And so everybody except me had a reaction. Everyone either had watery eyed or they were sneezing and, and literally like my cousin hooked us up for free because he, he's a doctor over there. And so um, he was like, ready? I'm like, yep. He literally was just like jab into the nose. And I was like, oh, I started giggling. I'm like, this is weird. My nose feels clogged, but this is hella weird, and everybody else had a bad reaction. The capital was sick as fuck, except it's super dangerous. We rented a whole Airbnb to ourselves, like a whole entire apartment building with like eight rooms. It's one of those like bed and breakfast kind of places, like that are, that are Airbnbs that people can rent either one room or they can rent a bunch of rooms for a big family. So, literally, like, um, the capital is super fucking dangerous. Like, we explore the capital quite a bit. We also go to this, like, chocolate there's in antigua in the state of antigua we go to this um chocolate museum and this wine museum and i and i bring a bunch of hot chocolate home and and some wine too i'll, I'll show off the wine fuck it i'll show one bottle off i'll let the car sit there who cares i have it like sitting around me too it's over here actually this is a friend from my this is a gift from for one of my mods and my friend the kepster Dude, this is some of the bombest wine. It was only like 9 US. I forget the fruit that it's made with. But anyways, that wine was amazing, dude. There was like coffee flavored too. I got I got two coffee flavors. One is one is for um one's for me and me myself only. The other one is for my homegirl Pineapple, who shows up in chat from time to time. So, yeah, anyway, so like, if she's watching, fuck, I spoiled it for you. I'm pretty sure she's not watching, she works right now. Anyway, so like, literally, like, um, like, and also like, like, uh, ginger flavored hot chocolate, coffee flavored hot chocolate, all that, yeah, I, I bought all those. Those are all mixes I'm gonna, I'm gonna make here. Okay, so Guatemala City is super dangerous, it's super hood. People will literally rob you for fucking pennies, like, um, literally, like, okay, here's the crazy thing. My sister was always like preaching, you gotta be careful around here because um, you don't, you know, you don't want to get jacked, you don't want this and that. She was on her cell phone inside the, the Hyundai bus that we were in. Her window was open, and literally, I was asleep when this happened because remember we left to the capital super early because we were stuck in traffic at some point, and I was asleep. My cousin Abraham told me that a, a, a fucking motorcyclist tried reaching into the window while passing by and snatching her phone, and she, he didn't get it. And so, literally, he stopped and started to roll back, and when my mom realized what was happening, she was like, Heidi! And she slapped my sister's phone out of her hand, and the motorcyclist took off. Yeah. In my apartment that I stayed in, if I, when I went to the little corner store, my cousin was like, my cousin Uber was like, look, look, dude. Don't take your cell phone. Take exact change. Even if you have one quetzal, people will fucking rob you here. People do not give a fuck in the capital. And in this country, period. Because it is poverty, poverty, poverty here. And yeah, we just pretty much did just capital touristy stuff. Like we just went to go, you know, we went to a bar to watch the 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 Copa America um, final, the Argentina Brazil game. Uh, we just um, we ate at Applebee's, which Applebee's in Guatemala is fire guys Applebee's sucks in the US but oh my god it's so good over there dude because the employees actually give a shit and it's pretty cheap too I had the most traditional Latin American breakfast at Applebee's which cracks me up and they get sweet bread too and so the last thing we did we went to like this grand market which is like where they make like you know oh by the way final lap I just noticed they make like um you know just typical Guatemalan stuff 
you know, like, like Guatemala, like, you know, like, like Guatemalan traditional, like, jackets and shirts and, like, and stuff. And, um, remember when I said, you know, I had to shut the fuck up and, um, not say a single word because I don't want to make us a tourist? I had my aunt negotiate a price for me for $10 and 30, like, something cents. Like, like let's just say ten and a half dollars for a freaking sweater, dude. And the sweater is, like... It has like the traditional like like pattering on it. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Like, I'll show you guys right now after I'm done recording. But literally, like that was the last thing we did. I stayed quiet and I was just like, I was just like, but my mom was like, you like that jacket? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's really beautiful. I said it in Spanish, obviously. I told her in here. She's like, quiet. I'm like, can, can you? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm like, no. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be known as a tourist. And so literally, my aunt was the one who bought, who got it for me, who dropped the price down. My cousin Uber gave me a freaking. Uh, uh, a gift too. He bought me a freaking uh, a new era McLaren hat, dude. Like a camouflage one. It's fucking badass. It's back there somewhere. I'll show that off too once we're in the garage. But anyways, that is the end of the Grand Valley 300. That was pretty damn cool. Hour and 42 minutes could have been like an hour and 35 if we didn't pit all the time. But yeah. So for those who just tuned in late. In this version of the game, if you turn off the music, it turns off the in-race music and not the menu music, which is cool for me for editing's sake. Hooray. So, 30 million yen or 300,000 credits. Let me save the replay. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to tell you about the story of, um, of my Aunt Alba in the next race. Oh, fuck me, dude. Oh, son of a bitch. I don't have any space left. There we go. All right, so I had to get a thumbnail for without saving the replay. I did that real quick. So anyways, um, literally, yeah. Yeah, so Skeletor, I'm gonna go ahead and edit in music because for the YouTube VOD, because imagine listening to the same song for an hour and 40 minutes. No thanks. So the car that we get is the Castrol Supra GT, the black edition. I think, okay, we got the the green one. I'm not sure if we got the green one last time or the blue one when we originally played this game, but yeah, I'm gonna have to tell the story about um, my aunt and her motorsport life. I kind of spoiled it there because her her husband is actually a big figure in motorsports in Guatemala and I have some stories to tell. Not a lot of stories, but just some general stories. But anyways, yeah, like it, it won't be much. It'll be like 10 or 15 minutes at most, I think. But anyways, the, the all-night endurances are next. <laughs> 